Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. Today we are going to be doing a Hue-Vember combo prompt. So if you don't know what Hue-Vember is, um, for the month of November it's a draw day challenge where you take one main color from this color wheel and implement it into your drawings. But instead of uh, committing art suicide and doing draw day again for the third month in a row pretty much, um, I'm just going to do combinations of days 1 through 7, days 8 through 20, 21, and then like, well, you get the point. I'll be doing like one video a week. And um, so days 1 through 7, as you can see, is this like lemon yellow to this blood orange color. And um, I'm deciding to do character art for my story Insomniac, so it's actually um, a trilogy type situation that I'm posting on WordPress at the moment if you're interested. I'll post the link down in the description. But this is um, a scene from one of their favorite restaurants that they frequent. It's called Photography. It's a faux restaurant <laughs> that has a photo booth and then in the back it also has live karaoke. I thought that was kind of cute, kind of clever, if not, whatever. Um, so I went with the restaurant interior because like it's really hard to do orange and yellow lighting that's not super obnoxious and that's not kind of cliche and like a sunset kind of manner. Um, it does still end up kind of looking like some afternoon light is pouring into the interior but I also went with this because I thought it just gave it this like warm and cozy like just a really like happy friendly vibe and I really wanted to capture everyone's personalities with this piece and of course like characters are complex in a way that like you can't really capture like all of their personality and like one thing but for those of you who read Insomniacs or will read Insomniacs um for this one, I you can kind of see how I tried to capture like Spider's nervous energy, Wynn's just like boisterous personality, um, her brother Tag is just like, he's not overly excitable, but he's just, he really, he's a uh, really passionate when he does speak. He's like, he's very into whatever he's getting involved in. And then of course, um, there's Edge at the head of the table as the head of this pack of friends, um, but the, also called the Blue Drakes, and he's just kind of like cool and off to himself and whatever, and then beside him is Synth, who is his exclusive significant- like they're not- they're together but they're not together, but anyway, um, she's just kind of like quiet and reserved and just kind of like chill or whatever and then trigger down at the end of the table interestingly enough she kind of acts as edges like second in command so she's kind of a book ending this group by being at the back and also just kind of has this like chill like i'm down for whatever demeanor she's a very like happy and sarcastic character but it's not over the top and annoying like she's like she acts kind of like the group's mom but like the cool mom <laughs> she's yeah she's the cool mom of the group kind of keeps everyone together and then next to her is beast who has a huge crush on her um don't mind the age gap it's one of those things where like the younger kid has a crush on like someone that's older. The age gap isn't actually because he's 16 in the book and she's 18 and she doesn't like it, it's it's fine it's fine they're they don't do anything um they do kind of <laughs> explore their feelings like because she knows that Beast likes her so she's constantly picking on him for it um but anyway so here we have the blue drakes um starting off with the sketch of spider i do kind of just speed through the the line art process because a you guys know what it looks like and you'll see what it looks like in the end um b because this is such a huge canvas and i have so many characters i get really nitpicky with this stage 
of the drawing. So I show you a little bit at the beginning and then I like just turn the camera off, finish the sketch. It also helps me not feel the pressure of drawing in front of a camera um, because that makes me extra nitpicky, which means it takes me extra long to finish the sketch. Um, so basically, I show you a little bit at the beginning and then I cut it out and then I just go to the end so that you can kind of see the transition between the characters. Um, starting on Trigger now and I had some trouble with her face again mainly because of like just the nerves of like I I've been I've posted so many videos at this point and it's, it's not like okay I'm not in the hundreds or whatever but like I should be used to like drawing in front of a camera at this point but it was just one of those days where I was like I really just want to just sit here and draw my babies without the pressure of doing it in front of the camera but it's for the video so I do at least show you guys like the beginning and the end and um now I'm working on Tag, and yes, Tag and Spider do look very similar, but I'm actually going to go ahead and post character art of them all at the end of the video as well, just so you can actually see the difference, because it's really hard to differentiate sand tone when you only have three colors to work with. <laughs> So I kind of try to get the illusion of like, oh, this character's lighter skin, this character's darker skin. But you really can't tell because everything's so orange and so yellow. Um, so Spider is actually German-Italian and his mother was actually, she's like, she's like very dark skin German. So he's, he's mixed, like he's, mixed melanated skin tone doesn't show up in here because orange and yellow. Um, Wynn and Tag are Scotch Irish, but they're actually, so Wynn has a little bit of a tan to her just because of like where they live, like she, they get a lot of sun. Um, Tag is actually a little bit paler. But out of the two, like, of course, they both have, like, the freckles and the red hair. Her hair and skin is actually a little bit darker than Tag, and that's another way that I differentiate between the characters. Um, Edge is British, because he just, he just is. Anyway, um, Synth, to his left, is, um, Chinese and Korean, and then Beast is just straight up Korean. There's actually quite a few Korean characters. Oh yeah, I forgot this happened and I had to like, thankfully Gimp saved it and started over. Anyway, um, Beast is Korean and then Trigger next to him is just straight up Brazilian. So her parents actually, so Somnilux takes place in Russia and Somnilux was supposed to be like the scientific community, this kind of like beacon of um, progress and just kind of like scientific innovation of like, okay, we've come this far, where can we go next? And Somnilux was kind of that experiment. So they pulled these scientists and engineers from all over the world to live in and build this community. So these kids are third generation of all of those people emigrating to this area. Um, <laughs> kind of rambling about the book instead of talking about what's actually going on in the canvas here, but I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory. So what I did here was I set my color later transparent so that I can still see the sketch without it being like in the way. It also really tones down how bright this picture actually ends up being. Um, I do kind of flash in between going somewhat transparent and then full color just so I can see what it's looking like and see what direction I need to go with the lighting. Um, but basically, of course, I picked orange as my neutral. Like, so in this picture, orange represents my gray. And then yellow is going to represent anything that's on the light gray to white spectrum. And then, of course, the darker orange to blood orange is going to be anything that's black or shadowed. Um, so... Again, like working with the limited palette is definitely really interesting. And I do veer off from, these are all just like the straight Pantone, Midtone. I do choose lighter yellow tones like pastel. Um, and then I also choose some pastel oranges to kind of push the highlights and push the shadows and just give it some more visual interest instead of like 
just this Fanta commercial color palette. Um, something I'm playing with here is I wanted it to look like you're looking into the scene through one of those like big empty glass windows. Um, the faux restaurant that I chose to reference, which you guys probably saw at the beginning there, is Faux Balam in England, not England, sorry, <laughs> London. And I only got to see the interior. I probably could have gotten some other like shots to see what it looks like, but I only wanted to use it as a reference of what photography in my head already looks like. So I just picked something that was close to that and then I worked with that interior to create the restaurant itself. Um, and that is the difference between referencing and tracing. Like, yes, I do trace the angles and the tables, but everything else I add in is my own interior. Like, you guys saw that I added in these drop lantern lights. I changed the sign, I add some extra elements, and again, that's the difference between referencing and tracing, is especially when you're like referencing characters or poses, like referencing poses is fine, whatever, but just, yeah, sorry, I'm kind of on this kick because like I've been following the Blue Potion Co. fiasco for the past few days. I'm gonna get off on that tangent because it's been, that dog has been beat to death and this is not the channel for it. I'm not here to like be one of those artists who's continually talking about controversies or whatever. So we're gonna go back into talking about the art now. So here you can see I am picking a lighter lemonade color to kind of give edge the brighter skin tone. Um, and then of course the window, the light is coming in directly from the window. Because glasses, they're supposed to be, and this was <laughs> really frustrating, because his glasses are like those little 70s orange lensed like plastic glasses. He doesn't have like, they're not prescription. They're just regular old orange lens sunglasses, but showing that in this picture was like, how? <laughs> so I pretty much had to make them a blood orange and then add like a pastel orange highlight and they still just end up looking like prescription glasses. But like I said, I'm going to include the other character art at the end of the video so you'll see what they're supposed to look like. And so now I'm just kind of again nitpicking and putting in all the little details and trying to clean it up. I wasn't going for anything super clean because I didn't want this to take like eight hours. I still ended up working on this for at least... So here's here's the funny thing. It's funny and frustrating. I spent about, I want to say, four hours just nitpicking with the sketch and doing the layout. It only took me 30 minutes to color this thing. But that's probably because I was less concerned with all the details at the point. I was just filling in lights and shadows and that takes like no time at all. I, I just thought that was... That's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes I can bust out a full piece like this in two hours. Sometimes, like I said, like this day it took me four hours, four and a half hours with the coloring and it's like, what the heck? Can I just be consistent? One day, maybe, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so something else that's kind of like a little feature that um, you may or may not have noticed at this point, the screens inside of the table. So, Somnolux takes place in 2245, so just imagine like our world but with technology and biology integrated to a point where you can just, everything is like seamless UI like interaction and um, the screens in the table are the menus. So basically it interacts with the chip that's in their wrist and it like lets them log in and like pick their food and pay their bill all there right at the table. The kiosks that are on the desk there are for like to-go orders or like if you have like a really large party and you want to split your bill you can do it like either half at the table, half at the uh, kiosk or whatever. But um, so this is the finished piece. As you can see, it's like super bright Fanta soda pop. 
Um, I still really like the way it turned out even though it is like these are not colors that I usually use. But um, yeah, so now um, you guys can see what the characters are actually supposed to look like. And all of this art, or at least the links to this art, are all posted on my Weebly portfolio, and that is the same as this account, tinyartist516.weebly.com, where I have this, I've got some other character art, sketches, environment art, and then of course on, if you go to summonlux.com, there is even more art. There is a music playlist for the book. Um, there are actually two different playlists. One is for books one through three, and then I also have a playlist for the prequel that I'm currently working on, Edge of Song Deluxe. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys take a little bit of time, check it out. Um, it is supposed to be kind of like just this fun sci-fi adventure mystery romp, um, but yeah. Go to somnolux.com to check it out, give it a read, let me know what you guys think. Um, so for now, I will see you guys next time, and have a weird day.